One of the most obvious forces that we deal with every day is gravity. Gravity is a field force that is actually fairly poorly understood, but it's one of the ones that we can describe and measure in our classroom. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the force of gravity and distinguish between mass and weight. The questions you need to answer in your notes is what is gravity? In what direction does gravity act? And what is the difference between mass and weight? And how large is one Newton of force? So it all started with an apple. Legend has it that on one beautiful spring day in 1655, a man named Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree in his garden, enjoying a glass of tea. Suddenly, one of the apples fell and crashed on his head. Now, chances are good that this last part has been fictionalized. Most believe that the apple did not actually hit Newton on the head, but rather fell nearby and caught his attention. That got Newton thinking, why did the apple fall towards the earth? Why did it not shoot upwards when it came away from the branch? And why am I sitting under this stupid apple tree anyway? Newton knew that unbalanced forces are necessary to move or change the motion of objects. So he came up with the idea that the earth must attract the apple towards it with some unseen force. He named this force gravity. Gravity is the force of attraction between any two masses. Okay, then why isn't my pencil flying across the room to the printer right now? If every object is attracted to every other object, shouldn't things be flying around towards each other? Not really. The mass of most objects is too small to cause an attraction large enough to cause the objects to move towards each other. Even though gravity is pulling the pencil you're holding, its mass is so small, it's not really moving. Actually, if you think about it, where is every object attracted? What happens if you drop your pencil or fall out a window? Where do the objects go? They go down. They go towards the Earth. Earth has a lot of mass. Because it has a lot of mass, it has a lot of gravitational force compared to everything else that is near us. Newton used these observations to develop his law of universal gravitation. This law states that all objects in the universe attract each other through gravitational force. Like we just mentioned, this does not mean that all the objects in space are flying towards one another. The strength of the gravitational attraction between two objects depends on two things. It depends on the mass of the objects involved, and it depends on how far apart those two objects are. The smaller the masses of the two objects involved, the smaller the gravitational attraction. This would mean that the larger the objects, the more the gravitational attraction between them. The other part of that is distance. The further away from two objects are from each other, the less gravitational force between them. Distance actually plays a larger part than the mass. This is why even though the sun has more mass than the earth, when we jump up in the air, we don't go flying into the sun. This might be a good time to review the difference between mass and weight. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Think of all the particles that make up your pencil. All of those particles constitute the pencil's mass. Mass does not change. If you take your pencil to the moon, it will have the same number of particles that it did on Earth. Weight, on the other hand, is a measure of the gravitational force acting on an object. So as gravity changes, weight will change as well. If we take that pencil to the moon, the moon will exert less gravitational force on it since the moon is smaller than the Earth. So the weight of the pencil would be less on the moon than on the Earth. Now since we live here on Earth and very few of us will ever get to leave, when we refer to something's weight, we are referring to the amount of gravitational force coming from the Earth. In problems, unless I say otherwise, we will be talking about weight here on Earth. Another sort of an issue that pops up is that again, since we don't get to leave Earth, the gravitational force act acting on us is fairly constant. Our weight doesn't change measurably if we go to Nebraska or Colorado or even to the top of Mount Everest. So we tend to use mass and weight interchangeably, but technically that is not correct. 
In honor of Newton and his work with forces, the unit that we use to quantify force is called the Newton. It is abbreviated with a capital N. Now, if you imagine an apple falling onto your head, you have an idea of how large a force of one Newton is. So are you able to define the force of gravity and distinguish between mass and weight?